Folkestone is an art school. So my mother was born in Margate and uh, she grew up there and Margate is an extraordinary place and it's an extraordinary place because of where it sits on the estuary. It's the place where Turner used to go to paint all these extraordinary light effects on water. So the, the sunset in Margate comes down over the water. It's the only place on the east coast where you can see the sun setting over water. And, uh, and that inspired him to make paintings of Venice painting paintings of uh, Napoleon in exile in Elba. He was actually in exile in Margate. <laughs> and uh, he made extraordinary paintings which are all about these incredible light effects, really born out of coming to the seaside. But we're not in Margate, we're in Folkestone. So this isn't a painting of Folkestone. It's a painting of a concrete works in Battersea that my mother made in around 1972. And uh, it's a rather miserable painting. It's rather like a Philip Larkin poem or perhaps a Morrissey song. My mum was a bit depressed in the 1970s. She felt she hadn't made it in the art world. And, uh, and she had kids and she was sick of looking after us basically. And she just wanted to get on and make some art. In a way, the idea of a, a Virginia Woolf's idea of a room of one's own is a very important thing. So sites like this, Dizzletree Concrete Works and various gasometers in South London became her creative space. And she made these rather melancholy paintings. And what we're going to do now is go on a psychogeographic landscape tour and go and try and find this location in Battersea. So in this film, we're traveling from Margate in the 1920s and 30s, via Folkestone, up to Battersea. We're traveling a lifetime from being a kid really excited about the arts to being a woman in her late 30s, early 40s, wondering what life was about. Oh my God, everything is the same, but it's different. So we've uh, magically appeared in Battersea near the ship pub, which my mother painted in uh, 1974. But this is the concrete works that she painted and this site is still a concrete works. In fact, the layout of it is exactly the same, pretty much as it was back in 1973. Even the gateway, this sort of electricity station here, I think that is probably. Uh, this sleeper wall is still here. The arrangement of the different gubbins for the uh, concrete works has changed, but the sense of being here is quite strange. It's like this is an animation of my past somehow. <laughs> and I would, um, I would travel out, out with my mum on Sunday mornings uh, and she would paint. And I remember this quite clearly. She was, uh, she was excited because I think I got older. I was the youngest child and, uh, and she didn't need to look after me all the time. I was gone to secondary school. And so she would come out and paint during the day and I would travel with her at the weekends and I remember distinctly her making this painting and she parked up here, executed this painting and for her the steering wheel on our minivan 
was her easel. So this painting would be propped up on the steering wheel. The inside of our car would all be covered with paint. I would irritate her and she would say, you know, I think, why don't you go and explore, Patrick? And uh, I, would, uh, I would disappear off and go and look at the foreshore and walk around these streets and then come back and then she would re reluctantly stop painting and uh, drive, drive home. Also, what this painting does is do something quite remarkable, which all paintings of landscape do, is that they mark a place in time and then forever afterwards, things change and develop around them and we change and develop around art. That's a really powerful thing. I'm a 52 year old man remembering when I was 11, looking at this painting. My mother is still alive, but she wouldn't remember having ever made this painting because she suffers from uh, uh, me uh, memory loss. Uh, and she's uh, ending her days in a care home in York. So the scene in many ways is the same, but everything else has changed. The sleeper wall is there now, and it was there in 1974. But there was obviously some sort of gateway in here at one point. And look, all the equipment is the same kind of equipment. You've got a, a JCB kind of digger there, but over there, look, you've got a similar... <laughs> the digger is the same sort of thing. It's orange, and it has Hansen written on it. But they've obviously been loading up their raw materials over here, transforming them in this machinery over here. And then people taking cement out here or on the barges on the other side. What's really remarkable about this is there's a little mark in this painting, one little white mark, which I think is inspired by the edge of this cornerstone here, which is obviously the entrance to another en uh, access point to the river but it's been covered over by these sleepers, but it's obviously been <laughs> It's a wonderful testament to human lethargy uh, that, uh, that that is still here and then this is, I don't know, it's kind of incredible. These patterns in this wood, this is where the, uh, the bolts go in to hold the shoe which holds the rail of the uh, railway line. So they probably, they must date from, you know, Edwardian period or perhaps even older. And what I feel like now is that I've walked into this scene somehow. <laughs> if we had a sophisticated animator, we would take a, put this on a Rostrum camera and have me wandering up and down in the painting. <laughs> This is a cement truck, and here's a 1970s cement truck. Still have the, the same formation of wheels in the back. So two tyres there, two tyres, and then four tyres together. And then this uh, chute here, and that big barrel for mixing the cement. So I've never been ex so excited to find an electrical substation, but this electrical substation is in, you know, obviously exactly the same place as it was when my mum painted it back in 1974 or 5. Um, the amazing thing is the colour, the colour, this little mark here is exactly the same colour as, as it is now. And the wonderful thing about that is that this shows this modulation of the colour here shows the cement dust has discoloured the green of the door and it's, <laughs> it's exactly the same now. The cement dust is discolouring this bright sort of uh, emerald green of the door. It's really beautiful actually. Look at this substation. Are you tourists in London? 
We've come all the way from Hertfordshire, yes. <laughs> How are you? Now this is a painting my mother made of this scene in 1974. Oh, really? And look, this electrical substation oh, is... Oh, no, here. no, it's all here. Look, the ship it's pubs. Here. The oh, ship yeah. pubs here and the, this wall is here. The concrete works. Is the concrete works? Do you mind if I take a photo? No, of course oh, you can, it? yes. Oh, sorry, you have to wait. <laughs> and the sleeper wall you're about to encounter, yeah. made with 1870s sleepers, is exactly the same as it was then. So nothing's changed. No, my mum's Deirdre Borlase. Yeah. Deirdre Borlase, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In another episode, we make concrete boats. Just imagine how many concrete boats I could make with the concrete that's produced from this concrete works. So this is the pub painted by my mum. It's the ship pub. It looks like rather a nice gastro pub, and now you can buy burgers. And I fancy a drink. I'm sure my mother painted a door handle on this door. Oh, maybe she didn't. Or on this door either. Hold on, there is a. Your homework is to journey to a place that's really meaningful to you and make an artwork which is in some way a landscape.